No wonder that needle's rising. Chris, we might overheat. We better give this a minute. Dude, make sure you get some footage of this grill. This might be the last hurrah for the 4720. Guys, the bat wing is back. It only took three, three and a half months, something like that from the last time we were mowing with the bat wing. But better late than never. We are in early November. The sun is shining, it's beautiful, the temps are cooler. That's gonna help out the 4720 from overheating. We are in the field that is just to the east of the main one that we mowed previously with a couple of different mowers until we can get it wrapped up. This field here has not been mowed besides using the mulcher to clean up the big autumn olive and bushes that were all around here. We mowed a little strip to go through to the food plot, but I wanna get this field done and in shape before winter. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Leave a comment down below if you have something to share. Subscribe to see more tractor videos and make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Now we haven't talked too much about this bat wing mower, but this is gonna be a 10 foot wide mower. These wings, they both fold up. Everything is hydraulically tied into just one circuit, okay? You can get this broken out into multiple circuits if you want to, but for most of you and most compact tractors that don't have a lot of hydraulics going on in the backside of the tractor, having it all in one fell swoop, just one plug-in, really simplifies things. So besides the hydraulics lowering and raising those wings, they're also gonna raise and lower the wheels on the backside here for transport or to get down to your cutting height. To manage your cutting height, you can see these spacers that are on this cylinder rod and you kind of have a handy storage location for them there, but they just spread apart like this. And as you extend this cylinder, you can add or remove additional spacers to help control your cutting height. So taking a look at the connections going on up front, you have three different things going on. This is gonna be drawbar connected, okay? So you can see the three point, I have this locked in the up position. For those of you not familiar, there's gonna be a dial typically between your legs. 3E tractors, you're gonna have a dial underneath the seat, but even if I lower down the three point or the rock shaft control, this won't lower down. So it's locked up, so it's out of the way. So drawbar connection, PTO connection, and then you're gonna have one hydraulic connection. Now a few fun facts about the Rhino TS-10. Again, this is a bat wing, or you might hear it called a flex wing. And so that means if you have uneven terrain, rolling terrain, it's gonna give. You know, it's gonna follow the contour a little bit better so it's more of an even cut. It also cut up to two inches in diameter material. Now I don't necessarily know if you wanna have a whole field full of two inch trunks on it, but at least some here or there are scattered throughout should be okay. An interesting note is that this is actually rated for as low as 25 PTO horsepower up to 60 PTO horsepower. So we're running this on a 66 engine horsepower tractor right now. However, I know I've seen it ran in a 2038R. I've heard of some guys running them on smaller machines as well. Now in my head, that doesn't seem like it should work, but it's pretty incredible to know they engineered it in such a way. Now when this is in the fully retracted position, it's gonna be about 93 inches wide, so it will fit through an eight foot gate. It weighs about 2,200 pounds. And if you wanna order one, if you're not buying one kind of off the shelf, so to speak, you do have some customizable options, you know, with wheels, guards, hydraulics, colors, that kind of thing. However, I'm gonna warn you, lead times are pretty long. We do have a couple of these on order because we know people are just gonna want them come springtime. If you wanna get one ahead of time, get your name on one or get an order in, I would encourage you to do that sooner rather than later. So you can place your order through goodworkstractors.com and we ship all over the country. Something like this, we're gonna put it on a flatbed ship it right to your house so you can offload it there. Well, we're gonna get to mowing. I hope you enjoy the scenery, enjoy the music, and thanks for coming by.
we just wrapped up. You know, I love that feeling, giving a field a, a fresh trim, a fresh haircut. This is the last mow. Again, it's a very late season mow. This will get us all the way through until springtime. Keep it looking nice and trim. So you probably noticed all the seed just constantly billowing up. It's coating. There's, there's two, three, four inches of seed on top of the flex wing here. The grill was covered in it and as soon as you brushed it off, it all came back. It was just wanting to suck right in there. The 4720 hung in there though. It didn't overheat near the end with about four or five small passes left to take. It was time, you could see that needle really starting to rise and get close to the danger zone. So again, we cranked it down to idle. We didn't turn it all the way off, thanks to the tips a while back. So hopped off the tractor, got down, brushed the front grill and everything else. And well, by the time those last three or four passes were done, it was already clogged back up again, but at least we were done with the project. I'll tell you, that stuff was a mess. But I think it's enough proof that the corrections that were made at the John Deere dealer over the summer with changing out the thermostat, flushing the radiator system, fixing the leak in the water pump, everything fixed the problem that we were having. It's operating just like it should. So I was mowing in the high three point something miles per hour, close to four miles per hour, which is cruising pretty good. Again, I mean, I'm out here just to kind of push things to the limits a little bit. So clogged up grill, going pretty quick on this thing. You know, this is, this is rated, it says, to go up to four miles an hour, which I think you could go faster than four miles an hour if your machine can handle it. And well, you can see the kind of job it does. It, it hacks down whatever's in its path. But this could be the last hurrah for the 4720. I've had my eyes on one of those Kubota M4D series, the new M4 Deluxe 071, I think is what it's called. And I think I just scored a pretty sweet deal on a 2020 model with about 50 hours on it. They come with a buddy seat in there, the Ultra Grand Cab, I think it is. A couple rear outlets on the backside, you know, radio. It's it's kind of got all the bells and whistles in there. I'm excited to try one out. But if I do get that one, and I think I will, then that means the 4720 is going to be on the market. It's time has come to an end. Well, that's going to do it for us. If you did enjoy the video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Leave a comment down below. If you want to see more tractor videos, hit subscribe. And if you want something for your tractor or your skid steer, maybe one of these bat wings, make sure you check out GoodWorksTractors.com. Well, the sun's going down. It's time to go home. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.